Chapter 56 The Necropolis Trig and Tenna stepped through the gateway, and their surroundings changed at once. Suddenly, the teens were now standing in knee-deep snow, buffeted by a strong wind. Trig pushed the talk button on his radio and said, Tenna, radio check, can you hear me? Trig's voice echoed in his helmet. Tenna flashed a thumbs up and replied, I can hear you, and I think this is definitely the necropolis. How can you tell? Because Avatus is over there. For the first time, Trig looked at his surroundings, peering in the direction Tenna was pointing. An Olenbar man was lying face down in the snow, about twenty meters away. Trig cautiously approached, drawing Appiah's pistol as he went. Avatus did not respond, and Tenna said, Is that blood in the snow? Trig looked at the dark splotches, then turned Avatus over. He's dead, Trig pronounced. Shot. Looks like he's been dead since yesterday. Whose footprints are those? Two sets of footprints led away from the scene. They were not new, partially filled in by drifting snow. To Trig's dismay, the sense of dread building up in his soul did not go away. Are you getting a premonition? Tenna asked. Yeah, Trig replied. It's not going away, so something bad is still ahead. Trig stood up and looked around. For the first time, he got an appreciation for exactly where he and Tenna were. They were standing on the side of a mountain, about 100 meters below the summit. The stone archway that made up the conduit was partially buried in snow. Looking around, Trigg saw that the mountain was located in a region shaped like a bowl, surrounded by mountains on all sides, but separated from them by a flat plain. Trigg closed his eyes and tried to think, to remember his geography lessons at school. He knew what these places were called, but the name escaped him for the moment. Trigg turned around and started walking toward the nearby summit. Tenna followed him, keeping a wary eye on Avatus's corpse until it was out of sight. Sloping gently upwards, the mountain was easy to ascend. Trigg reached the summit first and found himself looking down into another bowl. This one much smaller. Finally, he remembered what this type of mountain was called. Hey, Tenna, Trigg radioed out. We're in a caldera. A what? Tenna panted. Caldera. We're inside the crater a volcano leaves behind after it explodes. Uh-huh. Wow. Tenna's voice sounded labored. Hey, are you all right? Trig tried to run over to Tenna, but fell in a snowbank after taking a few steps. Oh, shit. Trig gasped. I forgot about gravity. Yeah, we must be on a full-sized planet, Tenna said. It... it hurts to walk. Trigg felt like an idiot. Of course, he had been taking special medicine ever since his visit to Bayou 4, to make his body stronger in a high-gravity environment. Tenna would probably break a few bones if she slipped and fell right now. Trigg wondered if this was why he was feeling a strong premonition of doom. Here, lean on me, Trigg said holding out one arm. With Tenna putting her weight on his shoulder, Trigg started to descend the mountainside, going back the way he had come, toward Avatus's body. We can't wait for Ponico or the others, Trigg said. Someone's here on the planet with us. Follow the footprints, Tenna suggested. They might be going to the same place we are. Trigg did so. As he stumbled through the snow, he focused his psionic healing aura onto Tenna, trying to strengthen her against the crushing gravity of this new world. While they walked, Trigg looked around again. Strange humps of snow were strewn about, as though something was buried there long ago. Up above, the sky was bright blue, and Trigg could make out a yellow sun in the sky. There was also a moon on the horizon its surface marred by impact craters. 
a faint white line cut across the sky from one horizon to the other. This planet has a ring, Trigg remarked. It must be beautiful. Trigg saw something that made him stop in his tracks, causing Tenna to lurch uncomfortably on his shoulder. He pointed back at the summit. You've got to be kidding me! A green light had appeared in the sky. It looped and swirled like a kite. The Song of the Solitaire? Tenna said. When did it get here? How did it get here? We know it can move through conduits, Trigg said. Question is, did the creature come on its own, or did someone bring it here? Trigg and Tenna pressed on. They soon came to a place where the ground seemed to level off, despite being halfway up the mountain. What the hell is this thing? Tenna breathed. Trigg was awestruck. At first, he thought he was looking at three large statues covered in snow. But on closer inspection, he realized he was looking at three massive robots. Warforms, Trigg said. You know, combat machines. They look like they've been here forever, Tenna remarked. All three of the warforms were deactivated. Nature had taken its course. Toppled over in the snow, rust and corrosion covered most of the machine's visible components. They had a strange design that contained lots of pyramid and triangular shapes. Never seen anything like it, Trigg said. Have you? No, Tenna replied. But the people we're following must have been interested, too. Trigg noticed the trail of footsteps suddenly turned into a mess. The two strangers had walked in several circles around the disabled warforms before moving away. The unknown couple had approached a rock wall before the same thing happened again. The snow was cut up as though the strange pair had paced back and forth for some time. I don't get it, Tenna said. The footsteps just kind of stop. I don't see where those two went. High above them, the Song of the Solitaire began to race in a circle around the mountaintop. Trick got a sense that the creature knew about the two teens on the ground below. Trigg took a moment to think, closing his eyes and trying to shut out the sounds of the world around him. A moment later, Trigg's eyes snapped open. Hey, Tenna, do you feel that? Feel what? Tenna replied. Sorry, I'm in a lot of pain right now from all this extra gravity. Breathing is a chore. Psionic energy, Trigg said. I swear it's coming out of the ground, out of this wall. Trigg reached into his pocket and produced the keystone. It glowed intensely. Refocusing his mind, Trigg attempted to analyze the space around him, which was permeated with psionic energy. Trigg looked at the rock face again. Tenna, do you trust me? Trigg asked. Yes, Tenna replied. What are you thinking? This isn't a wall, Trigg said, pointing at the rock face. It's a door. Those two couldn't get in because they didn't have the keystone. Then Trigg turned around and looked up. He turned his mind toward the Song of the Solitaire. It was time to put an old theory to the test. Will you protect us? Trigg projected a single thought up into the sky. Antenna scoffed. We still don't know if that thing is friendly, Trigg, she reminded him. You just had a hunch. This seems like the time to find out, Trigg replied. Up in the air, the Song of the Solitaire reshaped itself into a vivid green aurora, dancing across the daytime skies. I don't know if that's a yes or a no, Trigg admitted, but that thing definitely heard what I had to say. I could feel it. Come on, we're going in. <laughs>